right, so I'm going to show you how to set up a remote tech uh, satellite network. I've learned the hard way by, you know, trying all sorts of different methods. And I think I've, you know, kind of found the one that works. And it, it worked for me in my career mode. And uh, I have some videos up for that you can check out. But also, I did find that uh, there were some things that worked and some things that didn't. So. Uh, I'm going to do the things that worked and I'll show you how I did it. So what I do want to do is make up a... Uh, this is going to be a manned pod because when you're manned you don't need to have a satellite network connection. And I'm going to make... It's going to be basically a delivery vehicle for um, the actual you know, final deployment. Uh, this is going to be the... The first deployment is going to be uh, Kerbal Stationary Orbit, uh, so it's in line with the KSC command station, and that way um, it's going to be the, kind of the, the basis for the rest of the uh, satellite network. <clears throat> so what we we're, we're going to need here is we're going to need uh, we're going to need power. We're going to need plenty of power. Uh, oops, I just got to put them rocket engine on that. This is so we can return so we can return this pod, uh, this capsule to um, to carbon. Now let's see, we're gonna put uh, you know, we could probably get away with one of these, but just for symmetry I'm, I'm doing two and it doesn't need a whole lot of stuff. It will need... Uh, well... When you have... I have um, the interstellar mod installed, so it's it's going to ask... Well, it's gonna, what's going to do is those solar panels are actually going to overheat or add heat to the system, and when you get to a certain point, then it um, shuts down shuts down the solar array so I don't really necessarily want to do this and for the most part when you go behind the Kerbin and the you know the Kerbin's in between the Sun and, and Kerbal the heat actually dissipates I'm not sure if I even need this and I could probably get away with something uh, in line here but I, I want to use these spots to put uh, satellite relays or satellite dishes so one thing uh, you want to do is uh, now each of these has a range and and that's 90 megameters and I'm not sure the exact conversion but this dish will reach out um, it, it'll definitely reach to the moon and here's one at 60 uh, I think that's gigameters and that reaches out to Duna for basically everything we need to do in in the system here we could actually get away with um, with this one here and we can just make uh, I like to put four and then he has a long reach one and, and the only reason I'm putting this on is because if we or when you come around get around to doing something on the moon or Minmus you're gonna need something that has a little bit of a range so uh, these will actually help and I suggest just putting putting on as many really as you feel comfortable with because you, you're gonna need them eventually and I also have uh, let's see what's this uh, that's the beam power transceiver that's part of the ISM pack alright so this is it for remote tech what I'm gonna be using and I don't see anything else that I really care about at the moment so we are ready to make our uh, finish our rocket here so this is the transfer stage here which I want to be able to separate there's gonna be a lot of um, a lot of these decouplers because some of this is gonna get left behind I would like to see if I can put one of these on here the LV 909s and this thing's getting really tall which I don't like you know what I think what I want to do is something a little bit different. 
I don't know if I want to do this, but hey, anyway, it's all about science. We are going to... That should be enough to get what we're doing. And then I'll make the uh, base of the rocket a little bit bigger. And we'll set it up with one of these large tanks here. And we have a massive motor with the KW rocketry pack. And this is uh, 3 to 1, almost 3,000 delta V. That should be plenty to get us to orbit, but uh, let's just throw a couple more tanks on here. Why not, right? give it a little boost all right I think I'm just going to take a look at the numbers real quick, but I think we're going to be okay with this. Don't need that many. I just need maybe four. This can go here. And what are these? That's that. That, that, that. I can make, make that, that. And put these all together up there. So. Okay, I think uh, I think that'll work. Okay. All right, so I've got my launch stage here, and I have uh, about thirteen hundred delta V, and then another twenty nine hundred delta V in the center tank. And then we have 500, and then uh, actually it'll be in space by then, so probably about uh, close to 2,000 delta V. That should be enough, actually, you know what? Just to make sure, I'll throw another one of those on there. Now this thing is going to be pretty much unwieldy. So the thing that I do here is I make myself a little support and try to stiffen this up a little bit because it's basically just going to flex all over the place. And I won't be able to get it good there, but maybe in here. No. Nope. All right. Try that. Okay. So that's that. This will go down to here. I don't think we're going to need these, but we'll just throw them on there. Now, I have no idea if this is actually going to launch, so it should be should be interesting. All right. All right, and I guess what rocket is complete without control surfaces? And away we go. All right, see, that's pretty good. That's uh, nice and stiff. It's not flopping all over the place, which is good. So we're going to go ahead and let this thing do its work and circle back and close the loop.
As you can see here, the red dot is indicating uh, Kerbal Space Command. And actually, I already had a craft up in here. Um, this has nothing to do with anything. This is my manned ship here, and uh, I will just be finishing up and then rounding out my parking orbit shortly. Once this thing gets to where I need to go. Letting Mechjib do all the mundane shit while I explain or try to explain what's going on. So we want to have our satellites, at least the one directly uh, away from Kerbin, at a geosynchronous orbit of like 28... 74 uh, kilometers and that'll be geostationary and then we'll want at least two other ones uh, around in the same orbital plane and the same they don't have to be in the same orbital plane but they still have to be geosynchronous and uh, you need at least two more to make a, a good satellite network but four is better because then you can avoid some gaps and then I usually do like a series of um, a couple polar orbits uh, or a couple polar satellites and then some low carbon satellites for stuff that's maybe uh, so close to the planet that it doesn't really get it could be out of sync with uh, the ge geosynchronous ones during its orbit so this thing is taking forever and I don't know why needed to speed up I guess so we are going to do our circularization orbit or, or burn and get into a parking orbit and hopefully I have enough Delta V which I should have enough Delta V to get this out to geosynchronous orbit so that is gonna eat up a good amount of fuel though let that go I think we'll be fine because we can just take some from this tank, attach the capsule because it doesn't need that much delta V to get back. All right, Mechjeb is off. So what I want to do now is I want to uh, extend one side of the orbit out to uh, the geosynchronous altitude, and I'm going to do that at the periapsis, and I will burn prograde until I get to ooh, that's way too much and 28 a little bit less 28 68 69 that's good enough so once I get I'll hit my Kerbal alarm clock here so I have that and then I can just fast forward until I get to where I want to be. But let me just, before I get there, let me just make my lining up here. Line up with the next maneuver node so I don't have to adjust when I'm out there. And I'll want to, I'll want to start my burn at about uh, 45, oops, 45 seconds. burn fix my apoapsis to where I want to be and then once I get around to be like uh, perpendicular to the KSC then I'll do my other burn to get my uh, periapsis out so that way we're in uh, synchronous orbit so I am going to start burning now and it's just just a simple burn and get that going I'm at four times physics acceleration 
and it's taken that long and it's not a very powerful rocket engine but it's got good ISP and it's not terrible so uh, there is a KW rocketry one that's a little bit better but I just figured I'd use this one so I want to where am I here uh, pretty close I'm, I'm cool with that alright so now we just want to go fast forward a little bit that might have been what I wanted right there. I might have been uh, a little bit too over generous here with that time acceleration. And actually, I can aim this at mission control. I'll just say one of these actually put this out put this out hopefully the doesn't get hung up on those all right so let's just activate pick target mission control so now I have a, a link here and then I can it'll just help me to a little bit easier to see that uh, I am in uh, channel synchronous orbit or not It'll give me that kind of line if it's straight out from the planet, then I'm, I'm doing pretty good. And no, I don't, uh, I don't like that one yet. So let's just see, maybe a couple more times around. I'll probably cut out all this anyway. Alright, so I'm going to circulate here, and uh, hopefully I can get this thing to move. It's a little bit sluggish. I don't know why it's not showing a connection, but that's okay. Uh, we can fix that as soon as this thing wants to decide to burn. Oh. Of course, oh, good thing I was out of electrical power. That's why I'm not uh, um, between uh, Kerbin and the sun. Well, between the sun and me is Kerbin, so uh, I am out of power. My antenna is not working. That's why this won't doesn't show the connection. 
However, with the manned pod, it's not a big deal because we can still throttle up our engines. The maneuver is done. Okay. So now, technically, well, let's just go around the planet real quick because I, want, I need to get some power back. So, okay. Here we go. Now we are actually in a pretty, pretty good geosynchronous orbit. So, uh, technically, I can let this uh, ship or let this satellite, I can disconnect it all here. I don't need it anymore. I don't need the command pod anymore. This is doing its own thing. It doesn't need me anymore. But I'm just going to leave it connected because I don't need to. I don't need to disconnect it either. So I'll go to the space center. All right, here is our second manned craft. I actually changed the rocket a little bit, put a little bit more delta V on it, and if you look at the map here we have a Kerbal stationary satellite. It's the first one I launched. It still has the Kerbal knot in the command pod attached to it. I haven't taken it out yet in case I have to move this around at all. But um, we're going to launch the second one here and we're going to set it up about a third of the way through the orbit. So let's get this into orbit and we will uh, go from there. Uh, there was something messed up with my staging on the last one, but now I can't remember what it was. So we'll go ahead and launch, and then uh, we'll figure it out once we get close to orbit. Okay, here we are in orbit due to the magic of film. I can edit and come back right when I need to. So we are coming back just a little bit earlier. We're going to circularize, circularize our orbit, and um, I'm going to go ahead and open the solar panels since we are out of atmosphere so uh, you know what I should have put this on a quick button but I uh, just wanted to get the video out so I didn't really go through the action groups at all and all right so we got those panels are out and then we can we have right here com man one is our target and it is active or should be active and now I want to get this right about uh, right about here, right where my mouse pointed. That'll give me connection to that one. And then when we put one on the other side over here, uh, there would be another connection. I, I, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure, but I think these would be the Lagrange points or some Lagrange points. But I could be completely wrong. I'm not a rocket scientist or an orbital mechanic specialist. Uh, so, you know, don't quote me on that. But anyway, all right, let me, uh, let me get this into where I need to. Uh, I want to get my apoapsis up right into that uh, orbital line right there. And we can probably fine-tune this a little bit. Right. Yeah, that works. So uh, I have plenty of delta V in this thing. Uh, I could actually ditch this stage right now. There's not much in it, so I'm gonna go ahead and ditch it. Uh, we'll clean it up later, but I want to get uh, a little bit better control of this because that end piece, that uh, stage, was really heavy. So let me get away from a little bit. All right. And then we are going to kind of just smooth that out there. And I want to set it to next next node. And we will go in. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this again. And the only reason I'm doing it is because I want to um, I want to get my burn a little bit better. Not that it really matters this much. Uh, well, actually, the periapsis is over here anyway, so let's do this. Reset. A little bit too much here. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. I want to set this for about, uh, what's that burn going to be? 
That burn's going to be about two minutes, so I'll set this for one minute and uh, go zero seconds and add the alarm. Adjust my trajectory to this target indicator here, and in two minutes we will begin our burn. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start the burn. Just kind of keep it right there. And with any luck, I'll end up right where I want to be. And I could adjust this out a little bit more, but I think I think it's pretty good. And as you get further away, you'll see this go faster and faster. And um, even though I'm at four times speed, it's just going to go nuts in a second. So I'm going to slow it down. Adjust this up a little bit more. And get ready to shut down. And then I'll just fine tune it. Actually, I just came out right. Go a little bit more. Okay, there we go. So that's that. So now my next um, is just to get this lined up in the in the orbit that I want, and I'll just kind of float around here. That would be a quarter, and this will be about three quarters. Still a little bit too close. Maybe on this round it'll be good. And if not, then I'll just use the magics of science. Yeah, yeah, I'll do this. This looks good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it get to apoapsis, and it'll take no time at all to get where I want to be on the periapsis. Alright, go ahead and do it now. All right, so we are now in another orbit, geosynchronous, Kerbal stationary, however you want to call it. And um, it actually worked out, so it's a little bit closer than uh, what I want. I was going to break it into thirds, but I might just go break it into quarters, uh, because that works much better. And I'll do this again, and I will launch, uh, I might, might as well go with quarters, so I'll launch two more, and then uh, we'll touch back and see what we got. All right, and we have our Kerbal Synchronous Com Array set up here. So you can see uh, right here from the red dot straight out to Major Com Array 1, which is connected to Com Array 3, Com Array 4, and Com Array 2 over here. I should be able to get with this, I should, even though it's not uh, equidistant and split into quarters, I should be able to get full coverage uh, for pretty much everything except maybe in this area here close to the apoapsis. Uh, I might 
make this up in a another video, but um, this is just the geosynchronous or carbon synchronous satellite array, and I will be continuing to expand on this, but that's how I have done it so far. Uh, while you can do it with an unmanned probe, if you burn uh, pretty much straight up, I mean, you ha your ascent has to be almost vertical to get the first satellite out while you're still in uh, range of Kerbal Space Command, but I, I would suggest definitely uh, using a, a manned mission, at least for the first one, probably for the first two, but after that you could probably get away with it. Um, definitely for the first one it just it's going to save you a lot of headaches and it'll save you a lot of frustration so uh, and i i did it both ways and the the man mission was by far the more efficient use of my time um you know you you might save it by not launching or or by launching just a satellite and no uh capsule you might save on weight and stuff like that but uh it just from for my sa sanity sake I, I decided to do manned missions it was a lot easier now on the low carbon orbit stuff and the polar orbits i will do uh probably for the most part would be unmanned with uh you know light probe bodies and smaller rockets i can get away with a lot smaller of a rocket when you're not sending the capsule and all that stuff in so that is that and uh check back soon and i will have the further uh setup of the remote tech comrade network and uh, I'll show you some other types of orbits. Thank you.